everyone, this is Sami Ralwani. Today I'm going to talk about symmetrical faults. And symmetrical faults are the most severe fault in the power system. And they, in the US, for example, it happens like 8% uh, uh, of the faults up to 12%, I think, is three-phase faults. And when, uh, this happens when, you, when we have all the three phases come in contact with, for example, a tree branch or uh, something by accident due to, due to a tornado or, or an earthquake, they came together and touch. Sometimes, and this, this will cause a severe damage to the system if it isn't cleared in the uh, critical time. So, as a reminder, for a three-phase fault, we have uh, a system with uh, different uh, buses and then a fault happens at this bus K for example we can find the, uh, the voltage at any bus because the voltage at at the other buses will be a will be affected for sure due to the high current that is flowing through this bus K the voltage at bus K itself is zero but the voltage at any bus is equal to the brief volt this is called brief volt voltage So this is the default voltage, uh, then 1 minus the impedance at I, Ith-K bus divided by the impedance at uh, the, the bus K, which is called ZKK, and this is actually ZKK is actually Z Thevenin of the network. So it's the Thevenin equivalent impedance at, uh, at the faulted bus. And I will solve a lot of examples uh, for finding these uh, impedances and the pre-fault voltage and also the voltage at all the buses of the system. So there are two ways of solving this either by using the Thevenin impedance or by finding Y bus and then find Z bus which will be Y bus inverse Also, the Z7. Okay, I'm gonna solve now an example. So I'm gonna draw the network for the example, and then put the all the values on the network, and after that, I will start explaining the solution. Let's solve this example. Uh, this example is, uh, the question is, find all fault currents and fault voltages uh, for three-phase fault at bus 1. And he gave us the brief fault voltage, which is uh, 1 per unit. So this is the, the one-line diagram. We have three generators. We have three buses, bus 1 bus 2 and bus 3 and we have three transformers so first of all we have to uh, select an arbitrary number for the base voltage and the base 
MPV, uh, MVA the base voltage for this I selected 13.8 kV at bus 1 at generator 1 and the base MVA for this whole system is I have chosen 250 MVA why is that? so that I can convert the whole one line diagram in terms of per unit so in, in terms of per unit uh, for all the equipment in the system so let's find the the per unit impedance of the generator number one so for generator number one it has an impedance of J point five per unit multiplied by the new MVA which is two fifty divided by the old MVA the MVA of the generator which is two hundred multiplied by the old voltage which is 13.8 the generator has a 13.8 kV divided by the, the base voltage which is 13.8 kV squared so I will get J.625 So it's going to be 0.625 per unit. Then I will measure the uh, per unit reactance of generator number 2. So if we go up, generator two, number 2 has uh, an space uh, rating apparent power 250 MVA and the voltage across its terminal is rated 13.8 kV but the voltage across the generator terminal here uh, since we have a voltage base here at the generator terminal we chose to be 13.8 kV then the transmission line voltage which is the base voltage of the transmission line 1 up to bus two, 3 and 2 is gonna be I'll solve it here so the V base on the transmission line will be 13.8 multiplied by the turns ratio of the transformer number 1 which is 13.8 it will be 138 divided by 13.8 kV so the 13.8 will go with the 13.8 so we have 138 kV base voltage on the transmission line then the voltage base across generator number 2 so we have to transfer the base voltage from the transmission line to the generator uh, bus number two through the turns ratio of transformer number two so the base voltage will be across generator number two terminal will be the 138 kV multiplied by 15 over over 138 so we will have 15 kV base voltage across the generator number 2 so generator number 2 has a per unit 
subtransient reactance 0.35 so J point three five multiplied by the new base which is two fifty over the rated MVA two fifty multiplied by uh, the old voltage or the rated voltage of the generator thirteen point eight divided by fifteen squared so we will get J point Two nine six per unit. Now to find the equal uh, the uh, reactance of the generator number three in terms of per unit. So it's gonna be J point two seven five. The base voltage is 13.8 and the rate voltage is also 13.8. Also the apparent power's rating of the generator and the base apparent power that we choose is the same. So it will gonna it will it won't change actually. So even for transformer number three the uh, MVA and the voltage is also the same as the base voltage and MVA chosen in this example so it's, it won't change we will get J.15 per unit the per unit reactance of transformer number it's going to be the same since we have the same MVA so it's going to be J.125 per unit X of transformer number 1 will be since here we have 300 MVA then the per unit of the transformer will change so it will be J.2 multiplied by uh, 250 divided by 300 so we will get X transformer number 1 equal to J.167 per unit and finally we have to find the transmission line per unit reactance and this I will, I will do in the next slide so we have the transmission line we have the ohmic value of the transmission line we have to first find the base impedance on the transmission line and then convert this ohmic value or actual value to per unit value so X base of the transmission line will equal to V base squared divided by S base so the base voltage of the transmission line is 138 kV which is to the power 10 to the power 3 squared divided by 250 multiplied 10 to the power 6 and this will give me 76.18 ohms then the transmission line between 1 and 3 is equal to J25 divided by 76.18 and we will get J.328 per unit 
now the transmission line between 2 and 3 it's J 30 over 76.18 and this will give me 0.394 and as we can see here they are the same in parallel so we will get an equivalent reactance between bus 2 and 3 is J.394 divided by 2 so we get J.197 per unit so now uh, I'm gonna draw the per unit reactance diagram and I do that because it's necessary to find the Y bus of the transmission of the of the network so we I have the generator number one so we will have EGN one then the per unit reactance of the generator which is J point six two five then I have transformer number one reactance which is J point one six seven then I have bus number one then the transmission line per unit reactance which is point three two eight then bus number three then the reactance of transmission line between 2 and 3 so it's 0.197 and then I have the transformer number 2 reactance which is 0.125 and here is the periodic reactance of the generator number 1 which is 296 E G2 from bus 3 I have the transformer 3 reactance which is 0.15 then ge the generator reactance 0.275 and then finally E G3 so this is the reactance diagram we can see that those are in series those two are also in series and those two are also in series so we can add them together so we have fault at bus number one here is the fault three-phase fault and it's a solid fault and what I mean by solid fault we have the fault current is equal to the pre-volt voltage divided by the ZKK which is the fault, uh, fault impedance the Thevenin equivalent of the fault impedance plus the fault impedance if there is if it's not, not it's, if it's not, not a, a solid fault and uh, what I mean by a solid fault there might be some impedance because if a three phase line come in contact for example with a tree and the tree is obviously connected to the ground then the tree has an impedance to the ground so we make it Z fault sometimes uh, a snake and so on and these are self-clearing fault uh, thing after they burn the fault clear itself 
but we don't have zf so zf is equal to zero in our example so now I will <coughs> now I will find the y bus and the admittance bus is as follows for y it will be 3 by 3 matrix y11 y12 and y13 y21 y22 and y23 y31 y32 and y33 and we can see that <coughs> those three are equal to those three <coughs> sorry so to find y11 we go back to the reactance diagram so y11 will be one over the sum of those two So the sum of those two is J point seven nine two. The sum of those two are J point four two five. The sum of those two are point four two one. So it Y11 will be 1 over this number plus 1 over this number. Any impedance connected to bus number 1. So it's going to be 1 over J.792 plus 1 over J.328. Then there is no impedance between bus number 1 and 2 as we can see here there is no connection between those two buses so it's going to be 0 then y13 it's going to be minus 1 over j.328 which is the impedance between bus number 1 and 3 For this is zero. For y two two, it's gonna be one over j point four two one plus one over j point one nine seven. And y23 is going to be minus 1 over j.197. I don't need to write this and this because they are the, it's a symmetrical. Then y33, which is all the impedances connected to bus number 3, which is 1 over j.197 plus 1 over j.7 uh, 3.28 plus 1 over j.425 so th those will give me y33 so the next step is to convert Y bus into Z bus by taking the inverse of Y bus and we will get something like J point three three four eight 
j.0990 and j.145 here is j.2296 it's j.1401 and here it's j.2056 and this is symmetrical as well now to find the fault current on bus 1 obviously the voltage at bus number 1 is 0 since it's the fault occurs there the V4 divided by VZ KK which is the bus equivalent thevenin equivalent for the bus number 1 so it's 1 divided by J which is Z11 0.3348 and this will give me J minus J 2.987 per units so the fault current is almost three times the full load current of the system so now to find the voltages uh, across bus number three and bus number two so V2 will be VF one minus Z21 divided by Z11 and this is the ith bus and this is K which is the faulted bus so the fault bus is 1 the ith is the bus at which the voltage will be measured so it's 1 1 minus Z21 2 1 is this one uh, yeah this one so it's gonna be J.099 divided by J.3348 so the voltage is going to equal 0 0.70343 per unit now for voltage 3 it's going to be 1 1 minus Z3 1 divided by Z11 one, one. and this equal to 1 minus Z3 1 is J.145 divided by J.33248 and this will equal to 0.5669 per unit and we can see that the voltage at bus 2 is less than the voltage at bus at bus uh, the voltage at bus 2 is greater than the voltage at bus 3 because bus 3 is nearer to the fault bu faulted bus than bus 2 so the voltage will be affected here much greater than the voltage at bus 2 now we will find the current contribution of each generator and I mean by that is the current that is flowing to the fault bus from generator number 1 and from generator number 3 and from generator number 2 so IG1 will equal to there are several ways to do that but I prefer the following so if I want to find the current that is flowing from this source up to here I will say I will uh, say the voltage at 
a generator number one is one per unit so one per unit minus the voltage at bus number one which is zero divided by the impedance between them which is 0.792 so IG1 will equal to 1 minus 0 divided by J.792 and this equal to minus J1.26 to 6 per unit IG2 will equal to the generator voltage which is 1 per unit minus the voltage at bus number 2 which is 0 0.7043 divided by the impedance between them which is J.421 and this will give me 0 0.7024 per unit and the contribution of generator number 3 to the faulted bus in terms of current is 1 minus V3 which is 0.5669 divided by the impedance which is J.425 and this will give me minus J1.019 per unit and I can check that by saying that IG1 plus IG2 plus IG3 will equal to definitely IF which is the fault current this is the, to check your answers so this is the end of this example and I'm gonna post examples on unsymmetrical fault on the power system Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the lecture.